You made it. <laughs> Barely. <laughs> I'm not feeling right now. Barely. We're here, though. Episode we are here. Episode 12. Hi, Woo! everybody. <laughs> Oh my Lanta, it's been it's been a it's been a week. It's been a week. Yes. Yes, it's been busy, busy week. Yeah. I'm looking at myself now. I'm like, because I've scrubbed all the tan off, so my face is like darker than my body right now. I'm like, that's that's weird. <laughs> I'm like, Get I usually prepared. Yeah, I usually always have at least like a, a like a layer of self-tanner on and I have nothing. So I'm white. <laughs> I'm super white. I'm always I'm always that way. So yeah. <laughs> Oh, I am God. opaque. Yeah. I said, I said, it's not, or it's, um, some people told me once they're like, you need three coats of tan just to cover up the blue because <laughs> of my exactly. veins. Yes. <laughs> oh, so true. Yep. Oh my goodness. I get that. <laughs> <laughs> well, today's episode guys, if you haven't done so already, subscribe, like comment, all of the fun things to keep this channel growing. Um, we are going to talk about sportsmanship because that was like a, a big hot topic coming out of the Olympia with a lot of things that happened, you know, just with actually with like a lot of Olympia champions being dethroned and everything like that. So we're going to go into that today. But um, before we go, <clears throat> before we go down that road, how has your week been? Oh, it's been super, super busy. Um, yeah. So as soon as we got back from the Olympia, we had two days at home and then we flew out to Texas um, for Heather's pro debut. So Heather's yep. the owner of Premier Alternative Medicine and one of my husband's uh, pro figure athletes. And she's um, so also she, our sponsor of CCTS this year. So she yeah. is. I'm really yep. excited that she's coming and she's just, she's so great. Heather's been in the industry for over a decade and um, yeah, she's, she's just incredible. So anyway, she had a beautiful showing. Um, there were a lot of Olympians that showed up to that show. She actually came in eighth place. So nice. that's fantastic for a pro debut so we're really happy about that um and then yeah we got back on sunday and right back into work i feel like work is just like really picking up right now which is great mm -hmm. it's usually like it usually kind of decreases around the yeah. holidays so mm -hmm. um I'm, I'm just really like impressed with my team and i feel like i'm really really busy right now but at least it's keeping me out of trouble which is good on my reverse plan yeah um, so I was gonna ask about so, that because we're out, we're outside of the the Olympia now. So how's yeah. that been going? Uh, it's sure good. It is. At... It's going really good. I've had some you know flexibility for sure, but like when I go out right now, it's like it's nothing crazy. I've really been craving a lot of red meat, which is funny that I've been craving red meat so much because I did get my labs back and my labs are near perfect, except for my iron was super low. So that makes oh, sense. Yeah. And it also makes sense if you guys remember from a few weeks ago when I was staying with Jamie and Greg and we kept eating filet and I kept dropping. So clearly it was just like what my body needed at that mm -hmm. time. Um, but lab works really good. I had an assessment last week with one of my trainers. Um, we did a full blown assessment to try to figure out where I'm lacking, what I need activation wise and stuff. He brought me through my first workout yesterday. I actually had it filmed. So that will be on YouTube. Um, I, was gonna ask, and, I saw you post about that in your stories. And I was curious about that. Yeah. Yeah. So it was an hour assessment and basically what he was taking me through is movement patterns and then just some specific like isolation exercises to see like what's overworked, what's not firing enough, et cetera. And we actually found some some pretty significant findings. One of them being like my kickstand leg in my front pose. So the one that you put your toe down yeah. always on the back. Yeah. My mm -hmm. calf is always locked up on that side. And because of that, I am not able to fully get a full hip hinge on the left side, like in a B stance position. So we're working on just, you know, some, some of those things. So he brought me through my first workout yesterday, which was awesome. My glutes are so sore. So <laughs> we're, we're in a really good spot. You know, I want to really spend the, the shortest amount of time growing, but get the maximum amount. So mm -hmm. I wanted food high out the gate. I asked Jamie for that right away. So food is high right now. Training intensity is super high right now. And hopefully we can grow super fast. So I can yeah. get back on stage sooner rather than later. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm excited to see more on that whole thing that you just mentioned with the activation thing, because I think that's something that a lot of people take 
uh, and don't think about, you know, like I, I, I can assess from people just looking at them, they have impingements in certain areas because of the way that they pose or the way that they sit into their back pose. You know, like I've said before, there's some people that just have those imbalances. We talked about Jennifer Dory having the imbalance in the glutes. I'm sure that's stemming from something somewhere, you know what I mean? And just knowing where it's coming from so that you can fix it. You know, I know for myself, my left glute is bigger than my right. Um, and it's my because of said, posing. Funny. Yeah, it's so funny. <laughs> and so it's cause, because of posing. Because I posed on my right side my entire bikini career. You know, and it was one of those things up until, you know, a few years ago, I didn't really pay attention to it. Now that I pay attention to it, I'm like, oh, I'm like, that's why my right glute, I have a hard time activating it. That's why I have a hard time, you know, getting it to, to really to feel it when I'm trying to move and all that kind of stuff. And that's why I'm such a, like, an advocate of you need to pose on both sides of your front pose because yes. I never had that problem when I was in figure because you have to do quarter turns. Right. So you're training you both, sides both sides. Your, yeah, you're training both your both sides of your body equally. So it's never a problem. But in bikini or in wellness or whatever, you're 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 maximizing one side most of the time. And the other side is getting completely neglected. So you know, being able to pose on both sides will help with that kind of thing. And like you said, yours is coming from the fact that you point on that toe all the time, you know, something simple like that that you wouldn't think would be an issue. So yeah. that's interesting. I'm curious to see more on that. So I want to I want to do those assessments. You should. I actually <laughs> yeah. have I was just talking to a client yesterday. I'm so part of why my schedule is so busy right now is that I am getting on calls this week with all of my girls that are competing in 2024 and coming up with their 2024 show schedule okay. and, and yeah. timelines and things like mm -hmm. that. So calls are eating up my schedule. But one, on one of my calls yesterday, one of my girls was talking to me about that she doesn't feel like she's getting enough activation in her glutes because she's tied up somewhere, but she doesn't know where. So mm -hmm. I offered, I said, hey, go find a physical therapist or someone that you trust. This isn't something I can look at over a right. computer screen. Um, and she goes, well, I actually just trust your people. So who do you want me to go to and blah, blah, blah. So she's actually going to fly in um, in January, oh, get cool. this assessment done with Javi, my uh, general manager at my gym, and he's the one that specializes in this. And then he's going to create the program for her. But then from there, we're going to go right to the women's seminar together. So she's coming okay. in that same week. So it worked out perfectly. But yeah. also what I think the this type of assessment is so great, especially when it comes to bikini, is in the bikini category, we are obviously the smallest category. Yes. And the more that you move up the ranks, you know, when you become a pro and then an Olympian and things like that, it's not so much about these hard compound movements and adding in more tissue everywhere. Right. The more you climb up the ranks in bikini, honestly, the training becomes more and more boring, right? Yeah. Because it's like, mm -hmm. okay, we just need a little bit more upper outer glute, but don't yes. grow the entire glute. Or yep. I just need a little bit more in her lateral delt, but don't grow the rear delt. Okay, well, that's a very specific movement in training. And that's yeah. kind of where that assessment will say like, okay, Sandy wants more upper and outer glute. Well, why don't we have the upper and outer glute? Okay, you're locked up here. Now we need to do this movement before this movement to make sure blah, blah, blah. So it is very in depth and very interesting and very imperative for the bikini category, in my opinion, because it is just so detailed and structured the more that you have that muscle and that tissue and you're just making those fine adjustments yeah well i mean a great example of that is like we talked about is uh laura lee at the olympia where she just put on way too much size in one area you can't do that in bikini or you come outside of the criteria you know it just, just happens um and you're right as you get into the higher level divisions like your figures women's physique bodybuilding things like that you're just piling on mass, you know, you try to do it in, in an aesthetic way, obviously, but it's really more is more, <laughs> you yeah. know, which is not the case for bikini. You know, it's, it's very fine tuned and very yeah. um, detail oriented when it comes to this, this particular division, which I think is part of the reason why I like it too, because I am very like analytical about every little thing and you can see how different things come together right and how they come together wrong. And just because it looks good on one person doesn't necessarily mean it's going to look good on another person, you know? Yeah. And I think it's the, it's more challenging too, instead of just going in and like, you know, gr growing density everywhere. I tell my girls that are like in that boat that are amateurs, like, and they just need to grow. I'm like, enjoy it now. Like yeah. have fun with your training, like yeah. lift hard, lift heavy, use those compound movements now. Um, but the more that you have that muscle, it's just about that fine tuning it. And I think that is harder. It's harder it to almost pull yourself back. It's harder to evaluate yourself because it's just such fine tuning and the movement are again not as fun but I think that's where you know some bikini girls get caught up yeah. you know and they continue they continue training the way they want to which is fair 
versus mm -hmm. what the criteria is. And yep. it's just really important to note that, you know, the more that you do this and the more years you have under your belt, just be very mindful that if you want to be in that criteria, you're staying within, you know, your box. Yeah. And that comes to your conditioning and everything too, because, you know, some girls go way overboard with the conditioning um, and you just, you've got to be able to rein it in. I mean, we saw, again, we saw it at the Olympia, everyone that was overboard in conditioning was in the, in the bottom call outs because it was too much, you know, bikini is down the middle on everything. Bikini is down yeah. the middle on everything. And if you go too far one way or the other, you're out. Yeah. Yeah. No extremes. Yes. No extremes. Yeah. Which is supposed to be healthy, you know? <laughs> yeah. Which brings me to my, my prep. <laughs> yeah. Days out. <laughs> yeah, I leave for Hawaii tomorrow, which is why we wanted to get this podcast in today because then I can get it um, edited and uploaded. I don't have all the same software and stuff on my laptop as I do on my main computer. So um, I'm going to do all this here and hopefully. hopefully. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we can get it out. Um, I'm hoping, I don't know, I'm going to try and get the software loaded onto my laptop. I have one of those old ass laptops that unless you plug it in, it doesn't work. That kind of thing. So we'll, we'll see. We'll cross our fingers for while I'm gone. I mean, it works. Sean Couture with an old laptop? I know. Come on. Well, because I do everything on my main, my big screens. I have two big screen computers and that's what I do all of my stuff on at home. So when I'm away from home, I have my little Surface, it's a Microsoft Surface or whatever, and it works, but it's just not like, it's not my main source. Of not ideal. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I get my work done. That's all that matters. But uh, <laughs> but anyway, so yeah, it's been, um, it's been this kind of, since I got back from the Olympia, you know, yeah. it's like. Um, you had a super busy weekend too. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it was like. You know, when I got, when I left for the Olympia, I was, my weight was down. And then when I got back, my weight actually went up um, from inflammation. And I was like, oh, this will just drop after a couple of days. Well, that, that's all one, one good, except that I have a, had a really busy weekend, which we had a show. Um, and I told you about it. One of the girls uh, found out the day before, like 12 hours before the show, that she couldn't compete in her, in the show, show the following weekend, the Ben Weeder, because she had never competed in the NPC before. This is a new regulation that they put in this year that nobody knew about, right? So basically what they, it is, is if you're competing in the Ben Weeder, you have to have at least competed in the NPC or um, CPA if you're from Canada, um, at least competed before. You don't have to have placed or anything like that, but there's no true novices allowed at all in Ben Weeder. And How did nobody, you find that out? So I think I might have actually been the catalyst for this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I have a, a lady that I've been working with. She's in her seventies and, um, you know, I had a posing session with her on Friday and, um, we were talking about the show and she just didn't know anything about what she had to do as far as going into the show the next week. And I was like, well, I said, get on the site, register, blah, blah, blah. So she goes on the site and I guess she called them and they were like, well, you can't do this show because you've never competed before. And she told me this. I was like, no, you can do the show. I'm like, what, since when? I was like, since when is that a thing? I'm like, no, this show's been, so the Ben Weeder's been in the States for two years. This is the third year. It was in Canada before. And then they moved it to the States because of COVID. Uh... So they moved it to the States because of that. Um, the last two years, um, I've had girls compete in it both years. You know, one of my girls won a pro card the first year. Uh, she competed in the pro league the next year, that kind of thing. You know, um, Lana, Lana Dunbar, she won her pro card there. Yeah. Um, so it's a pro qualifier. So it makes yeah. sense that there would be some sort of a, a regulation as far as getting into the show, but there never was before until now. So, so anyway, so she called and I was like, no, I'm like looking at the site and everything. It doesn't see anything on it. You have to go all the way down. There's a little tab that says eligibility. And if you click on the eligibility down in the fine print, there it is right there. Like you wouldn't know unless somebody told you, right? So a bunch of girls, and I just had this happen this weekend at my group posing class. I had another girl who was planning on doing the show, and she's never competed before. And I was like, you can't do the show. I was like, so she's doing, there's Battle Royale is the following day. It's an NPC show, so she's going to do that one instead. Um, so anyways, so one girl, the, the girl that competed uh, this past weekend, though, she has had her heart set on competing in Ben Weeder for over a year now. That's like the show that she really wanted to do. I said, well, there's a show this weekend. <laughs> I was like, this is five o'clock at night at seven, on, on Friday. I was like, there's a show tomorrow it's right here. She want to yeah. show up? Yeah. yeah. So she called the promoters because she wasn't even able to get to check-ins that night because it was already after five o'clock at that point. And they're like, well, no, no big deal. The girls are in the afternoon, so we have time. So just come and register in the morning. So she went and registered in the morning. I, I 
technically didn't have space for makeup, but I made space for her. So um, I got her makeup done. She got on the tanning. I She borrowed a suit because her suit wasn't even ready yet. So she borrowed one of my suits. She ended up winning her class. <laughs> <laughs> and then she took took second in the overall. So it ended up working out really well. And that was worth gonna, it. Yeah, I know. Now she's going to get to do the Ben Weeder this coming weekend. So, but that was part Thank of God what Thank God you, like, I feel like it was the perfect storm because if not, oh, she so would have showed up. And again, this is why I think this is, this is why I thought I was the catalyst for this. Because like I said, the 70 year old lady that, that, that um, called in after that was when they sent out an email to everybody that had registered. <laughs> they sent an email did. out to everybody that registered after that saying that if you have never competed in, in the NPC, you can't compete in the show. Oh, so that's sure. Then it was happening. Yes. Like more and more yes. people were. So that's when my, my other client texted me. was like, I just found out I can't compete in the show. And I was like, what? <laughs> says who? And like, nobody knew her coach didn't know. I didn't know. Nobody knew. And and like she was a true novice. Yeah. Well, no, that, that true novices were not, were not allowed to compete in the show because we've had true novices in that show in previous years, you know? So it's like, and he uses that. He even said to her too. He's like, I feel like I, I dropped the ball. And she's like, no, I'm like, nobody knew. We, nobody knew. She didn't know she was registered for the show. I didn't know. I've been there the last three. This is, you know, the third year I've been there the last two years. So yeah, it definitely it's like, have been some sort of announcement. Yeah. And you yeah. know, they're doing that now with the, the Arnold amateur. Um, so the Arnold amateur you have to qualify for now this year. Um, and okay. they, but they just announced that, which is fine because it's now. Now we know. <laughs> you know in March, so we got time. We right. got time for that. But there was no not, no announcement for the done year. So I was like, whoa. Well, at least we figured it out. So anyway, so that was part of the stress on Saturday. Stress. So And on your feet all day. Right. I was on my feet all day. I added two competitors in that I didn't plan on adding in as far as their hair and makeup is concerned. So it was like, you know, that's another, that's another two, three hours, two hours, you know. So it's like. Okay. And I still haven't done my cardio. I still haven't got, I have to go see my seamstress and pick up suits and all this kind of stuff. So like, it was a long, I didn't get home after everything until after 10 o'clock at night. And, you know, I was up and doing hair and makeup and I was up at six. So it's like, yeah, nonstop. And it's just, it Literally. is what it is. Yeah. And then the following day was my group posing class, which um, I did because I have so many girls competing at Ben Weeder. So I was like, I know that you guys want that final tune up and everything. So we did that. So again, those are really stressful for me. Not, not because they're hard, but just because I'm on the whole time and I'm assessing, you know, 12, 13, 14 girls, whatever it is that's in the class. So it's like, boom, boom, boom. Again, it's just a high level of energy expended, you know, then. And, men and mentally exhausting. Yeah, mentally. You know, it's when, yes. when you're, when you're a week out, you know, you're, you right. have a little bit of brain fog, food is low. Yep. You had all the things happen in the day before. It's well, hard to be on and you have to put all of your attention and energy into that two hours right. with those girls. And then you're done. I'm yep. sure. That's right. And I was like, uh, but you know, and then still at the same time, I have to go do my own cardio. I have to go do my own training. You know, I have to do my own stuff. Uh, I have not packed a single thing, not one thing <laughs> to leave. Still? Like still. as of today? As of today, I have not packed anything. Is that normal for you? No. <laughs> it is not normal. I usually normal pack for me. like a week ahead. <laughs> yes. Oh, I, I usually start like so. So, you know, I'm doing my own tan and everything, right? So. I bought one of those pop-up tanning tents to put into the into the um, hotel room. So I'm like, okay. I've never even tested this thing. So I open it up and it pops right open. I have no fucking clue how to close it back down again. <laughs> I can't Still. get it to work. Still. So I'm like, well, I told, I told my husband, I was like, I'm buying some cheap ass shower curtains and pasting them up, them up on the walls because I am not dealing with this. <laughs> Who cares? Why? It's not happening. If I can't get it now in my bedroom right now where there's no stress or pressure, no, I'm not doing it. Whenever. You're not going to do it on show day. Nope. So we're just going to get some shower curtains and put those up. We'll be good to go. You know, That's it's what, funny. Um, my black backdrop, you know, and yeah. all of my, it, it's like yeah, yeah. that where you have to like twist yes. it a certain way. Yes. That's and like the first is. like three weeks I had to go because I order it on Amazon but there is a video on Amazon on how to do it the first three weeks or four weeks I had to keep going back to Amazon and I'm like okay fold it this way and turn yeah. it this way I mean that's it's how this hard. thing is too it's not easy and I'm like no, no I'm not gonna be fucking a, with this the day of the show the yeah no, I'm not I'm like no. this is not, it's not happening mm -mm. yeah no we're just gonna put up some it's, like I said it's uh, you know uh Rachel Oberst another big yeah. pro yeah she sprays herself and that's what they do they go to the dollar store and they get a bunch of cheap ass like uh shower curtains and put them up and that's what they do in order to spray themselves so that they don't Perfect. get it on everything I'm like that's what I'm gonna do 
Screw it. So then what are you going to do <laughs> when you go from Hawaii to Japan? Are you going to bring the shower curtains? You'll just I'll probably bring just get extra. extra. Honestly, I'm going to go to the dollar store today and I'm going to bring, I'm going to just buy like six shower curtains, like Perfect. just throw them in my, in my, my carry on or my so, back so baggage much or whatever. Easier. And then you just leave it, toss yes. it. You don't have to worry about it. Exactly. I'm like, they're, you know, probably, probably cost a whole $10. You know what I mean? Exactly. So, and your bag will get less and less the more yes. you travel with more yes. room for other things that you buy or so I'm sure you yeah, buy some things food. in Hawaii. Your food, exactly, yeah. yeah. It's gonna all work out. I know, because I have, I have food being delivered to Hawaii on Friday from my Mega Fit Meals. So Sorry. I was like, I'm gonna take my food now that I have now, but then, um, you know, I've got another week that I'm gonna be in, in Japan. So I'm having a whole another shipment sent to Hawaii and I'll get it at the hotel. So then that, I have that to go with me. And then um, take that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, and then at the end of the day, that that takes out the guesswork of the the food. You know, I know what I'm eating. I, you know, all that kind of stuff. So today, what I've you're got gonna to have access to yes. how you're gonna cook it, whatever. Yep. Because, like, you know, again, even just the sodium content. Like, I have the same salt shaker, and I just do the same twists on everything, so that way it's consistent. You know, um, very important. So, so yeah, so that was all the way through till Sunday. Then, so, you know, when it comes to peak week, uh, checking in with Jamie and everything like that, you check in every day. So I check in on Monday and my weight still has not dropped. And I'm just like, <sighs> like what? I was like, I was having a you moment where I was like, I'm just gonna pull out of the shell. <laughs> I was having that moment and my head was just like, not there. And I'm just like, this is just, I don't know what to do. So um, she bumped up my cardio to 90 minutes and then dropped my, uh, dropped my macros a little bit. Um, and I was like, well, I have a massage today. It's like a, it's not like a deep tissue massage. It's a relaxing, like love massage and kind of massage out. So, um, I felt a lot better after that, did all my cardio, all that kind of stuff. And I went to bed last night at the weight that I woke up at the, that morning. So I was like, I better be down in the morning. <laughs> And were you? Yes, two pounds this morning. I was on two pounds this morning. I was like, oh. So <laughs> like, what that means is it was a lot of inflammation. It was a lot because of inflammation. Do you usually go up after body work? Well, I guess it was a love massage, no. but usually I go up a little bit after body work. If I drop after, it means that they pump the inflammation out. To be honest, but I don't. I, I've never really weighed myself. I don't think so. I don't. I don't really know if I've I always go down. up. Mm -hmm. I always go up, even like by 0. 0.7 or one. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah, but and then it goes so, right back down. Yeah, but I don't, I don't know, but like, um, you know, I've been taking Epsom salt baths and making sure my water's up, all those kind of things. You know, just trying to keep the inflammation down as best I can, and um, and I think probably doing that extra fifteen minutes of cardio yesterday probably helped too. Just helped to get the get everything flowing a little bit more. Um, but I, I I'm just you know just happy that we're down. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, okay. I'm like, now we're within like, we're in, within less than two, like th less than three pounds of what my stage weight was last year. So I'm like, okay, this I can handle. I'm good. If I'm up three pounds, I'm fine with that. Even I, I think I'm still going to get going to drop more. You know what I mean? Now that, now that my body's like running, you know what I mean? But, get there, travel. Yeah. Absolutely. But like, even, you know, cause she had me taking pictures in natural light, which I don't ever do because it's just so inconsistent. Yeah. But even my, like my natural light photos on Monday were like, like, mm. <laughs> like no, this is not good. I was like, there's no hamstrings to be found. <laughs> Why did she have you switch to natural light knowing that you were going to be on the road and trying well, to like find both. that consistency? I'm doing both. So okay. because I feel like you can see skin texture and stuff like that a lot better in natural light. Um, I feel like my, my ring light blows me out sometimes. Um, one thing I noticed, like, cause this is, it's just, it's just such a hard light right on you. Right. So it's a good thing and a bad thing because it doesn't, it doesn't give you a false sense of security. You know what I mean? Like I, like when I do my, my videos where I do my walk to the back and I get to the back of the room, I can see, I have so much more definition because you have a little bit more, a little bit more diffusion from the light. You know what I mean? Depth, depth of the light. Yeah. Right. And I'm just like, okay, so I don't know what I, like, I don't know what I really look like, you know what I mean? And I'm just like, <laughs> It's like, so I was the like, the, the, yeah, it's, 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 it's hard, you know? And then, you know, then you add in the other things too. Like typically when I do my um, check-ins, I have a self tanner on, but like this week I'm not putting self tanner on. So I'm like, white as a ghost. So you can't see the same kind of shadows that you would see if you had tan on, you know, stupid right. shit like that, but you can't, like, you can't really tell what's going on. It makes on. a difference, right? Mm -hmm. It does. Yeah. It does. 
So I'm just like, you know, a couple of things that I'm really happy about is like, finally, I'm seeing like the, the hamstring come down on the side of my, of my leg. So I'm like, okay, we're good there. From the front, I'm seeing the cuts come through my quads. You know, you don't want to have feathering in your quads. You don't want to have really intense cuts in your quads. I get that. I understand that. But you also don't want them to be inflamed either. You know what I mean? Correct. So I'm starting to see that. Um, <clears throat> what else? My, my, I finally, the other part was I wasn't able to go to the bathroom because I was on my feet all weekend. So I finally was able to go to the bathroom yesterday. That made a big difference too. Good. Um, you know, just little things like that make, 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 make the difference. I mean, they really do. They make the difference. So, you know, it was one of those moments. I literally had those, mo those moments yesterday where I was like, I just got to remember this is what happened to Jordan going into hurricane too, where she just wanted to pull out the week of the show. Yeah. Cause that's how I felt yesterday. That's how I felt. And, um, I, you know, I had my moment where I almost, I, I didn't, but I almost cried while I was doing cardio. because so I was just like in my head so much. And I was just like, oh, I'm like, I've, I've worked so damn hard for this. And this is what's going on right now. Like, I'm just, I'm like, I'm at a loss, you know what I mean? And it's not, it's not even like the end of the world. Like, it's not like I look bad, but like, I know what I'm supposed to look like right now. <laughs> you know what I mean? But also remember like, you're flat. You haven't yes, eaten yet. Yes. Yes. There's that you too. Know? But I mean, but this is, this is raw. This is real. This is yeah. vulnerable. You know, this is the yeah. week of the show, you know, and we have all been there. I I have been on cardio and peak week many times, just crying. Yep. No, no reason. Just feeling so emotional. And like, am I going to be ready? Not, you know, that's, we all go through that, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. So, and, and so, you know, it's, it's, I think it's important for people to realize, I mean, I've been doing this for 14 years now I still go through this and you still, still go, go through, through it you still question you still have prep goggles absolutely yeah. it doesn't yeah. ever you know really change you know we are our biggest critics and mm -hmm. this sport is freaking hard you know when we're doing 90 minutes of cardio a day mm -hmm. and our food is suffering and we still don't feel like we look our best that's a little challenging it but is. it's also it's also us right in the way we perceive mm -hmm. ourselves but the the points you made are perfect right your certain lighting your color yep. of your tan is gone and these are things that make you feel good and make you yep. feel your best and if you don't necessarily have them that's a different look and you know not your confidence so i think yep. it's all going to come together perfectly especially if you drop two pounds this morning and then hopefully yep. we'll get you there and get you settled and you'll just continue to drop and then once she starts feeding you, I would be interested to see how that metabolism starts ramping up too. I know. Well, it's, you know, it's, it's funny too, because I always think back to past preps and stuff too. Like one of the best looks I ever put on stage was Miami pro. And that was 2014, maybe 2015. But anyway, I remember the morning of the show, I looked at myself in the mirror and my pictures that I sent to my coach. And I was like, I look like shit. Like I, I was like, I, I, I'm soft, uh, you know, all this kind of stuff. And I sent her the photos and she was like, I think you look great. <laughs> I was like, I look like shit. <laughs> but then I get off stage and I see the photos and the videos from the stage. I was like, damn, I actually did look really good. I was like, where, where was my head? You know, where was my head? Like yeah. I looked, I thought I looked terrible that morning. I thought it looked so bad. So, you know, it's, I, I know this about, about prep. I know that my brain gets, doesn't see what is actually happening, you know? Yeah. So I try to find like, ha like good things. Like, you know, one of the things I mentioned to Jamie yesterday, I was like, one of the things I've been most concerned about going into this prep is I am 42 years old. So I'm concerned about getting that master skin, you know, mm -hmm. like that grainy, that, that, that it just looks different, you know, yeah. from the back yep. and all that kind of stuff. And I was like, I was like, oh, I don't have that. I was like, oh, <laughs> for, for Jesus, I don't have, have that. that. <laughs> so yeah, your, your I was like, beautiful. I don't know how, because I have this the thinnest, like, say, Eastern European skin ever. And I'm just like, I don't know how this is happening right now, but I'm not going to question it. So I think it's just been, you know, just like anything else, it's consistency over time. Like over the course of my whole life, I've taken care of myself. You know what I mean? Plus I haven't like, I, I've never been, you know, overweight or anything like that. So I've never ballooned up and come back down or anything like that. So my skin hasn't stretched a ton, you know? So yeah. I think all of that helps. Yeah. I think all of that helps. But, um, you know, little things like that, I'm like, okay, my, my upper body is the leanest it's ever been in my life. I'm like, you know, and I, and I do think that I'm probably going to be the leanest I've ever been on my lower body too, completely. Like once we get there, um, but it's just like, you know, that's the last thing to go. And it's just like, I have to sit back and say, but I know I'm ahead of where I've been in the past. You know, <clears throat> I know I'm in a better spot than where I was in the past. I've got more curves. I've got more muscle. I know I'm ahead. So it just says. <laughs> back and like wait for everything to come together basically is how that yes. goes that's, yeah that's it. and meanwhile it I'm, I'm like, meanwhile i haven't packed a single thing and i'm gonna be gone from home for two weeks i'm going to a foreign country that i've never been to and i don't speak the language so that's freaking awesome 
<laughs> minor details. Uh, minor details. Minor details. I'm like, plus, like we talked about, it's like two completely different um, seasons from summer and hot to fall and cold. <laughs> I'm just like, what did, what did I do? One to roller with the winter clothes, one roller with some more summer clothes. <laughs> like, what was I thinking? <laughs> I, I think I think it's gonna be fun. I think you're gonna have. I just can't wait to hear about your experience. You know, I, I, hard for. I, I think the show day is gonna go fantastic. But I I really do think that this is gonna be so cool for you. You know, yeah. the travel, going by yourself, mm -hmm. and I don't know. I think I, I don't know. It's just gonna be so cool to hear about. I can't wait. Well, I'm excited too. Like, so I haven't really traveled a lot outside of the U.S. I've traveled all over the U.S., but I've only been to like Canada and Mexico and stuff like that. So going all the way on the other side of the world is going to be pretty freaking awesome by myself. Within too. a two week period. <laughs> I right. know. Seriously. I was like, You're I'm going to do it. Do it big. I, that's exactly. I said, when I do stuff, I do it right, man. <laughs> if I'm going to go there, I'm going to go all the freaking way. All in. I'm going to compete. I'm going to spend some days out there I'm going by myself. <laughs> oh my God. I'm like, you know, and I'm just, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be one of those things where, I know a lot of stuff's going to be thrown at me and I'm just going to have to deal with it. And I'm kind of excited about that. You know, it's like life is, is, is short and you only get so many opportunities. So I'm going to take advantage of it. I'm going to have some fun That's it. and just see what happens and, and hopefully, you know, come back with some stories that, that I'll have for the rest of my life. So yeah, I'm excited about it. It's gonna be fun. You know, what's <laughs> funny is I just had an email pop up from you, but we're on a podcast right now. Oh, really? I like probably for, for, uh, for CCTS, right? I was like, Sean Hector Lewis, what? <laughs> <It's> for CCTS. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, as we're sitting here, I had, uh, I think Jamie wrote me, wrote me back on my check-ins this morning as we're sitting here. Yep. So, yep. And she's, <laughs> Let's best see. you've she ever happy? looked. Yeah, best you ever looked and I'm proud of you. Good morning, rock star. I was going to say, good morning, rock star. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so for those of you that don't know, Jamie always does voice to text when she responds yeah. to check-ins. So like I, I've obviously stayed with her a lot. So it's so funny. Like when she's doing check-ins, you hear, good morning, rock star, blah, 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 blah. Or hello, gorgeous, blah, 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 yeah, blah, blah. Just, and every yeah. time she starts it, I'm like, what nickname's going to come up now? <laughs> <laughs> it's rock star this morning. I honestly, she usually says gorgeous. So I, I must look really good then if I got rock star. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Exactly. It's so funny though because every time I open up my own check-in from her, and I'm like, I can hear her type, yeah. like voice texting Talking. it. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yep. No, because I've been there in the room too, where she's doing check-ins, and you're right. She she voice texts everything. So it's everything. Just funny. Yep. And I <laughs> type, and I'm a, yes. a very fast typer, and she's like, mm -hmm. like we'll be doing check-ins together, and she's like. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, so because I do um, posing check-ins too, and I do like a posing portal um, videos. So I do videos. So same thing. I'm I'm more of a voice texture most of the time too. Like if I'm if I'm writing if I'm writing an actual email business or something like that, then yeah, I'll sit down and type it out. But I, I voice a lot of stuff. So sometimes I'll go back and read it. I'm like, oh, I didn't mean that at all. Right. <laughs> I'm like, whoops. All right, I thought I knew what I meant. <laughs> I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, I love yeah. to, I would, I would love to voice text, but most of the time Drew's sitting here and like, I don't want to mm. bother him and you mm. know, it's kind of distracting, but yeah. yeah. So thank God I'm a fast typer, but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that helps. So yeah. So, um, once we get done with this podcast here today, I'll be editing this and putting it out. And then, um, we actually have a, we have a, some other stuff coming up with the business too. So I got to shoot a couple of videos. So I gotta do that too. Then I got to pack. I was going to say, you need a pack. That's what you need to do. <laughs> I know. I know. Well, do you have a list way... going? Yes, I have a list. Okay. You're, so, you're going to be you fine. Know, yes, I'm going to be fine. And here's the other thing. I don't think I'm going to sleep sleep tonight, really, because my flight Probably leaves not. at 6 a.m. So that means I've got to leave here to go to the airport by 3.30 in the morning. So, because um, it's an hour, or the, the, the airport's an hour away. So, um, but it's a long day of travel. Like I travel from DC to Minnesota, so I'll sleep. And then from Minnesota to, um, to Hawaii, so I'll sleep. So my goal is I've got a couple hours in Minnesota um, while I'm there, you know, get some steps in walking, and some cardio, that kind of thing. Um, but by the time I get to Hawaii, it's only four something in the afternoon in Hawaii. So, cause it's a five hour time difference from here. So by the time I get there, I can still do my training. I can still do my cardio. I can sit and I, and I like to do it that way because then I can get the blood moving and everything yeah. and get myself, get myself acclimated. 
Um, so my plan really is I'll, I'll probably, I mean, I'm probably going to work up until the, till midnight. Cause I, I mean, I don't go to bed till after midnight anyway, you know, so normally exactly. Yeah. So I'm just going to put everything together and it just is what it is. If I get a couple of hours of sleep, I'm good. Um, because I'm going to sleep on the flight the whole time. So that's my, that's my goal. It's probably so. better that you show up to the flight tired. So you yes. can sleep. That's exactly what I was thinking in my head because I'm like, you know, I've done that before where like, I'll get up in the morning and I'll go get like coffee or something. And then I can't sleep when I'm on the flight, you know? So yeah. I'm not going to, I'm not going to do that. Um, and typically if I'm leaving for an early flight, cause I do like to take the first flight out in the morning because a, they're usually the direct flights. This one's not, but usually they're the direct flights and the, B, it's the DC area, so I don't have to deal with traffic. I just boom right in and out. Um, yeah. And then C, there's less problems with the first flight out in the morning. Like there's no delays and stuff like that. So that's what we tend to try to do too. Yeah, yeah. So I typically, when I fly anywhere, I'm usually out on the like six to seven a.m. flight. Me too. Um, just for that reason. So you know, if we're going to some place like because I did that going to Olympia, <clears throat> it's only a two-hour flight, not even. Right. Um, so I was in Orlando by 8 a.m. You know what I mean? I know. You texted me and you're like, my room's not ready. I forget where I was on the, the, the table for body work. And I was like, oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, they actually, I was they actually expecting you to be room. there that early. Yeah. yeah. I got my room ready really quickly. I actually just ran a few errands and stuff. My room was ready by oh, not even 11 o'clock or something like that. So I was able to get in. So it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I know. It was great. So, Love that. Um, but yeah, so we'll see. And then, you know, cause obviously once I get to Hawaii, then I've got to I'll Instacart stuff and get everything all settled and everything like that. But I, you know, being five hour time difference, um, <clears throat> I'm going to kind of want to stay up a little bit. You know what I mean? That's, that's another reason why I didn't bother trying to go to sleep early this week because I knew I was going to have to get up different hours times I'm out there. So I'd rather just almost like, thinking oh, about the time it, change you're yeah. going to be on and mentally preparing. And, yeah. Cause then yeah. even if I, you know, if I'm out there and I go to bed at like, you know, eight or nine o'clock, it's, it's closer to, to our this, time frame over here to this time. Yeah. 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 Which you're not going to want to go to bed midnight before the show. Right. No. Do you do that before show? Yeah. Okay. You try to go no, a little earlier. Yeah. The, um, oh yeah, I'll definitely, I'll try to get eight hours. I mean, I don't think I will, Good. but I'll try to get eight hours. Of um, course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which means I'm probably gonna have to get up at like four because the show pre judging starts at eight for four Hawaii. pros. Yes, the men okay. are on first, um, and it's classic physiques on first. But I don't think that there's a lot. Um, I think there's okay. a handful, um, and then wellness, which there again, there's only like three wellness girls signed up. Um, <clears throat> the pro list for for bikini, it's it's all out. All the pros are out. The um, it's a pretty decent lineup, but most of them are coming in from like New Zealand. So, which I knew I have a friend who who lives out there and she's like, everybody from here is going to Hawaii and Japan. <laughs> and I was like, okay, all right, cool. So um, new, new competitors. Right? Yeah, yeah. 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 I don't know that. I mean, the, the only two people, the only two names that I know on the list are Ashley Kaltwasser and Eureka. And I know Eureka is not on the list right now, but I know she's doing it. So, okay. Um, those are the only two girls I know. I don't know anybody else. So fun. Yeah. I mean, Oh, and Francesca, Francesca. So the story was, I put it in my stories on Instagram too, because um, Francesca, Lauren and I have been friends forever, like since we first started competing and um, she took some time off and she just started coming back this year. And I get a text from her the other day. It's like a, it's like a collage of photos of us over the years, like the different shows that we did together and everything. She's like, this just popped up in my, in my uh, memories on my phone. She goes, and I just came across your podcast and on YouTube and she goes, and I realized you're doing Hawaii. She's like, I'm doing Hawaii too. The last time that I competed in Hawaii, she and I competed together in Hawaii, like wow. we're on the same team, had the same coach, all that kind of stuff. So we're going to get to do the show together again. So I thought that was That's really cool. cool. I was That's like, really we're, cool. I was like, talk about coming full circle here. You know what I mean? Seriously. So yes. I'm like, this is pretty cool. It's gonna be fun. And you'll so, have someone to hang out with you yeah. know, when, when you want to, right? Yeah. When you're not yeah. taking your time and things like that. So you're not totally yeah, alone she's, if you need some. She's not coming in until Friday. She lives in Oregon. So she's not um, just a direct flight for her. And okay. uh, she's like, I'm not coming until Friday. She's like, man, if I knew you were doing the show, she's like, I would have gotten to come in earlier. <laughs> and a couple days for earlier. A couple extra days, but eh, we'll hang out on Sunday before I leave for Japan. Yeah. She goes home, you know, that kind of thing. So. That's really cool though. Full, yeah. full circle moment for sure. Yeah. It's really, it's really cool. And like the other part of it too, is there was another girl that was on our team back then too, who I've worked with over the years. And she came back to competing this past year too, figure pro. And I helped her with um, her, you know, her hair, makeup, pursuit, posing, all that kind of stuff too. So it's like 
uh, the three of us kind of had a whole little like bonding thing years ago and now we're all back in it. So it's kind of cool. You, you just never know how those things are going to play out. You know what I mean? So it's been, a, it's been a fun year. It's been fun seeing. And that's why it's always important. I don't know. My dad always said growing up, be nice. Cause yeah. you never know when you're going to see these that's people right. again. And Hey, that moves into everyone. our sportsmanship. That moves into our sportsmanship topic. So yeah, it does. absolutely it does. right. You have absolutely no idea when you're going to meet these people again. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> So let's talk about that. Let's go into sportsmanship. So, um, you know, just like what you just said, um, you have to remember this is a tough sport. We, you know, we obviously have a lot of emotions in it. We have a lot of time, effort invested into it, things like that. But everything that you do not only affects you, but it affects other people around you. And it's not like you're fighting against a team or anything like that. It's it's another person, like it's it's a singular person that you're that you're competing with, and I wanted to emphasize this too because I had a question come in about this. Um, <clears throat> I had a question in my stories come in um, and asked me how I felt about competing against Ashley Caldwell in my next two shows. So I wanted to address this because I'm never competing against anyone, ever. I'm not competing against anyone. I'm competing against myself. And I'm competing with other competitors, right? I'm never going into a show thinking I need to beat this person or I need to beat that per person. Never. That's not what I'm thinking. What I'm thinking is I need to beat me. <laughs> I need to beat my, my, my last look because that's the only thing that I have control over. That is it. If I, if I put my um, show schedule together or whatever based on other people, I would have to change my plan every friggin' week. You would never show up. <laughs> no, no. I'm like, you know, because, you know, Ashley just decided to do these shows as of this week. So I'm like, so, you know what? So now what do I drop out? Because she's the third in the world. So I can't beat her. There's no way. You know what I mean? No, that's not how that works. So, you know, there's strategy involved with this when you get to a certain point. Um, and I get that. I get all that kind of thing as far as if you want to qualify for the Olympia, blah, blah, blah. My goal right now is just to beat myself. That's it. That's my goal. And to, to enjoy the experience, you know, like we've talked about several times before, you never go into a show wanting to lose. That's never what you go into it. But also the focus should not be, I'm going to win this show because you don't have control over that. You know, you have control over you. And my focus is to bring my physique in as close to the criteria as I possibly can. That's always my focus. Like I want to get to the criteria. It's not about competing against somebody it's you know we're all in this together which whatever the judges decide to choose that day as far as who's closest to the criteria i'm competing for the criteria so when it comes down to it um it's not about the other people on stage it's about me and it's about what i bring and it's about what i have control over those are the things i have control over i don't have control over anything else i don't have control over it so those are the things that will drive you crazy up here I'm already go going crazy enough just trying to fit my body to the to the actual criteria, let alone if I worried about anybody else. <laughs> yeah, and packing. I know, right? For real. So it's like, you know, when you're backstage and, and what I think a lot of people don't realize, when you get to the pro league, we're all in this together. You know what I mean? Like, and I even find this in the amateurs too, but it's even more so in the pro league. Like we realize we've all earned our spot on that stage. You know, there's not one of us up there. We've talked about this when, when Jennifer Dory talked about this with her acceptance speech. There's not one of us on that stage that has not worked our asses off to be on that stage. We all deserve to be there, every one of us. Um, and then it's just a matter of who, again, who fits the criteria the best that day, you know? Um, so going into the, the sportsmanship thing, again, it's never against anyone. So we have to keep that in mind as we're going to these shows. Like I see it happen a lot. Like I said, a lot more so with amateurs than I do with pros where it's, it just becomes a whole big mess because they, they think that they should have won or, you know, my, my mom's best friend's dad said I should have won. <laughs> you know, they said on Facebook, I looked better, you know, that kind of stuff. You got to realize that when you go out there and you say, I should beat this person, what you're doing is you're saying not only that that not only do you have poor sportsmanship at that point, but you're actually knocking that other person down at the same time. You know, you're not building yourself up. You're knocking the other person down. Um, and that's 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 a big problem. And, that, you know, that was something that I found was 
different about this year's Olympia, meaning like the ones that there were several people that um, that lost the titles, things like that. Just the way that they responded and they reacted um, was surprising, you know, yeah. like like you should be graceful and humble and in, de in defeat because it's not it's not their fault. <laughs> you know what I mean? They were just trying to bring their best their best to the stage. And, yeah. uh, and, and they just you can't be mad at that person. That's right. They just have the be... judges awarded that day. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And it's just like, it's not, again, it's not like, I, I don't think they went into that show thinking I have to beat that person. Like they maybe no. they did, you know, like that, that could have been in the back of their head, but I think they were going into the show also with the same concept of, I need to bring my very best look to the criteria as to I win. Can, so that they choose me, not so that they don't choose you, you know? Correct. I think that kind of mindset's a, a very slippery, slippery slope because yeah. then not only are you focused on bringing your best, you're too consumed with what somebody else is doing. And just like you said, mm -hmm. it goes, this sport is all about controlling your controllables. I cannot control mm -hmm. what my competition is doing. I can only control what I'm doing. Right. And that in itself drives me crazy. That's right. right. That's what like we, were, we talking were just about. talking about. Yeah. But I, th and that's something I have 100% control mm -hmm. over. Um, but I agree. Like I attempt every single uh, show as like, am I beating my last package? And yep. if I get caught up in the comparison game and looking at that list and who's there, who's not things like that, I'll never show up to a show. Yes. I will never show up to a show. I mean, Absolutely. it goes off of what we were just talking about earlier. Like we get in our own head all the time. I will never think that I'm good enough to show up to a show if that's the way that I approach it. Mm -hmm. I just have to show up knowing that I did everything I could. I left no stone unturned. I did my best. Here you go, judges. This is what I'm presenting to you today. You pick what you like today. And right. again, that's not an attack on anyone. I feel like we'll, we'll all be a lot happier. I keep saying this is like my new thing. We're all going to be a lot happier when we realize there's plenty of success to go around. Also, yes. if you're winning all the time, is there really any fun in that? I know because if you're winning all the time, like, cool, then I would just shut it down. If that was like me, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, I would be like, okay, cool. Like I did it. I did everything. I'm good. You know, Yeah. I either, I think in the sport, for most people, you're going to lose a lot more than you win. And within the losses is where you learn how to be better and how to yep. pivot and things like that. And that's how you get to the winning show. Yep. So yep. I don't know. I, you know, the backstage at the Olympia, you know, pretty much anywhere that I go, I try to just be a really good representation of, of our sport and, and camaraderie. You know, yes. I don't care what team you're on. I don't care who your coach is. I don't care if we've never met before. I'm gonna try to help you backstage. If I see that your hair looks a mess or that something in your tag is coming out of your suit, I go up to you and I say, hi, can I fix your suit for you? Like, I want you to deliver your best. And I would also like for someone to do that to me as well. Yep. You know? Absolutely, absolutely. And that, you know, that's the thing too, I think people don't realize we want, if, if you're a true competitor, you want your competition to be at their best. Yeah. You know, because you want to say, like, I stood up next to the best in the world. You know, yeah. when I came back last year, the first show that I did was New York Pro. If I was really concerned about winning a show, you I would not have, have done there. New York. <laughs> you would not have been there. That's a very highly competitive show. It attracts a lot of Olympians, a lot of good athletes. And it, it was all Olympians that year, you know. Laura yeah. Lee did it. Janet did it. Janet did um, it. I think Issa did it too. I was going to say, I thought Issa yeah. was in that one. Um, yeah. Janet was there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, you had top, top contenders on that show. And my point in doing the show was I wanted to be up against those girls so I could see what I needed to improve. You yes. know what I mean? Like I, I hadn't been on stage for four years. And I'm like, I don't even know if my body's going to fit this. You know what I mean? Like I need to see myself next to these people. The following show that I did was Dallas. and There were no top names in that show at all. So if I, if I had done that, I wouldn't have even known, you know, if, if my body fit, you know what I mean? Like I want to be up against these tough people because then I can see what I need to do better in order to get closer to that criteria point. You know, Absolutely. they are the criteria point. Like, again, going back to Ashley, if you're top three in the world, you're pretty damn close to the criteria. You know Absolutely. what I mean? So if I'm going to stand next to you, then I'm going to see where I need to improve, you know? Yeah. And so, if you keep showing up to small shows without, the top Olympians, you're really only getting compared to maybe fourth call out at the Olympia. Right, right. That's the, the best in your mind that you're bringing, but right. it's not the best, right? Right. 
Right. So yeah, it's it, it and show selection. This goes back to show selection, which we talk about all the time. It depends on what your goal is and what you mm-hmm. want to see out of yourself and what your expectations are. And obviously, show selection at that point is matters. Yep. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, it, it, it really doesn't matter who's standing next to you up there. We are all deserving of that spot. Mm-hmm. And no matter who wins that day or loses, I'm not going to be mad at the winner if I'm, if I didn't win, you right. know, I'm going to be proud of them. I'm going to be proud of myself and I'm going to take the experience and learn yep. and pivot, yep. pivot, continue to pivot. But good sportsmanship. You know, I always clap for the girls on stage when they're getting yes. awarded, always give them hugs. Like, and I genuinely am happy for them because I know mm-hmm. that that today was not my day and that's okay. That's right. Um, you know, but it, it is, it's about finding that, that good sportsmanship type mindset. And there's plenty of success to go around and yes. it will be your turn one day. You just have to keep pivoting and getting better and showing yep. up and don't be nasty. <laughs> yeah. Well, this, so this brings another point. So, you know, again, after the Olympia happened, we had some poor sportsmanship on stage, things like that. And then after that, we started seeing fans of those people become belligerent, you know, um, yeah. you know, like we talked about, I don't know if we talked about this in the podcast, but this happened, I think after, um, it did. you know, fans, Days fans after. of, yeah, fans of hottie went in and ended up getting, you know, Derek's freaking Instagram taken down and all that kind of stuff and things like that. And one of the crit- uh, criticisms out there was that hottie didn't come out and say anything like to try to rein his fans in and stuff like that. Um, where do you fall on that stance? Do you think like, do you think it's hottie's fault that his fans went that crazy or do you think he should have said anything or do you think he should have just left it alone or what is your thought process? <sighs> But the very simple answer to that is no, I don't think it's Hottie's responsibility or any of our responsibilities to control our fans. Like we, we, people are people and they're going to do what they want to do. Um, I am still confused on kind of the whole situation and kind of where Hottie stands on it to, you know, for things that keep coming out, it seems like things are okay now. Um, mm-hmm. You know, we, ha- uh, we have to keep in mind too, that there's a language barrier. I also think that Cultural. he has a hearing, a hearing yeah. issue. You know, it's a cultural so I, difference too. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, I think, I, I think at the end of the day, I don't think he was trying to be malicious. I think right. he was emotional, yeah. and it was the wrong choice at that time. Obviously, from the outsider looking in, but to him, that's what he needed in that second. Maybe if he could go back hindsight twenty twenty, he would make a different choice in that mm-hmm. moment. I I truly do believe that. Um, as far as statements go, I mean, I'm someone too that is very cautious of what I put on social media and things like that, just because you could say what you think is the right thing and somebody's gonna misinterpret it or change your wording around or or et cetera. So I don't know if maybe lack of saying anything was him trying to protect himself or knowing that there was a language barrier and would it come across the right way. I do think that maybe sh- something should have been said. I don't know what though, you know, and I don't know yeah. maybe if it, if it would have helped or catalyzed things. It's very hard. The, at the yeah. end of the day, though, I never, I love Derek Lunsford. I know him personally. I think he's a fantastic human being. I love his wife, Jelson. And I know that those, that, that they, like Derek's reaction, which we talked about after the mm-hmm. Olympia, like when Hottie walked off stage, Derek wanted to run after him. Yeah. And that's like Derek's heart. So I know that their relationship is close because if it wasn't, Derek wouldn't have felt that way. Yeah. So it's tough. I, I, I just think that was just a really tough situation on both of them. And I think that they yeah. would go back and do things a lot differently if, if they could. Well, and I agree with that. Um, and I just know also that in Heidi's culture, like we said, culture differences, it's um, that re- response from him and the response from his fans is normal. That's that that's how they like it's actually a little bit downplayed what what Hadi did as far as like in a normal person would have from his cultural background would have responded a whole lot worse. You know what yeah. I mean? So people don't understand that. Like we just see stuff here in the States and think that everybody's like us and they're not. No. Um, his culture is very, very different. They're like they won't. My, you know, my, like I told you before, my husband was a high level wrestler, so he's wrestled all over the place. And, you know, people from the Middle East and things like that, he's like, they're, they're, they're rough. He's like, you know, they'll, they'll, he's like, if they lose, they won't shake your hand, they'll spit in your face. You know, like it's, it's, it's rough. So from that vantage point, I actually think that Hadi did the right thing <laughs> yeah. because I know how much stronger he could have responded. Could have been. 
Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. And he didn't. Yeah. Drew was telling me like in their culture too, like when you lose, you're almost like exiled. Correct. Correct. And yes. So that maybe that anxiety, you know, that mm -hmm. pressure knowing he that feels he just like lost. he carries the entire country on country his on his shoulders. Yes. yes. That's what drew mm -hmm. how drew was explaining it to me too, which I, I can get that reaction then yeah. you in, in that moment, I would yeah. be petrified and scared and yeah sad and mad Absolutely. and uh, there's so many emotions your your olympia is on the line what what did uh how much money did derek win five hundred thousand dollars like that's a lot of, that's life-changing money absolutely no <laughs> yeah, it is so absolutely i get it you know and, and and as far as the fans are concerned again same thing i don't think it's hottie's responsibility on how they responded um do i think he could have come out and said something maybe but i don't think it would have made a difference i don't think it would have made right. a difference Right. I think they're going to react the way that they're going to react regardless. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and again, it could have been a lot worse. Could have been a lot worse. Yes. Um, yeah. Especially too with Derek's speech. I didn't know if yeah. that kind of stirred up some things too, which I love Derek's speech. I'm not, I'm not saying anything about that. I just didn't know if maybe that kind of catalyzed some things Absolutely. too, which again, Hottie had no, has no control over. Absolutely. So yeah, I think it was just the perfect storm yep. of, situations and things that happen and now that the emotions are died down i think everybody's better and things are coming out now and derek obviously got his instagram back and things are fine now but yeah i think that 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 definitely was a huge catalyst for the olympia weekend and the sportsmanship yeah. and things like that and then bringing it back to just as a regular competitor you know what i mean um just be aware that how you respond and react to things will cause almost a domino effect. You know what I mean? Yeah. If you're on stage, I've seen this happen before guys, girls, whoever they get pissed off on stage. I've seen a guy throw his, his trophy cause he didn't win his class. He didn't even freaking him fifth. Didn't even freaking get close to winning his class. You know what I mean? And some throw his, his, his trophy across the stage, you know, stuff like that. It again is a domino effect. You know, and people remember that, like they always say that there's no such thing as, as politics in the sport, things like that. But there is the human bias, human nature. And it, yes. And if you are a poor sport and say you're on the NPC stage or something like that, and you do something like that, I promise you that they're going to remember that the next time you get on stage. I promise 100%. you. Just, it's going to be sitting in the back of their head. Like this was the guy that threw his trophy. Absolutely. You know, that, that happened like seven years ago. And I still remember that guy. You know yeah. what I mean? So it's like remember his face yes. and what he was wearing. Yeah, it takes Absolutely. you back to that moment. Absolutely. Um, and not only that too, but again, it takes away from the people that did that did place well that day. It takes away from the people that actually won that day. Um, and it actually makes them feel bad a lot of times, you know, it makes them feel like they didn't maybe they didn't deserve it. Like I see this a lot on on you know Instagram and uh, Facebook and things like that, where people go on and put up pictures, you know, and say, oh, you know, why did this person beat me? I look better than them, blah, 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 blah. It's like, the, first of all, first of all, guys, you can't judge a show from photos. That's the first thing. We've said this a thousand times. Whenever I do my show reviews, I always put That's it out there caveat. and say, listen, I was not there in person. This is just what I'm seeing from the, from the pictures. I could be completely wrong, but this is what the photos are telling me. You can't judge a show from pictures can't do it. So you throwing one picture up of you fully posed that other person in a transition shot and saying, I should have beat this person is bullshit. <laughs> it's bullshit. So don't do those kinds of things. You know, those are things that, that you, it's okay to have emotions. Like we talked about, it's okay to be upset. It's okay to do all those things, but do it in the privacy of your own home. Do it with your wife, your husband, your coach, whatever, when other people aren't around get that out of your system so that when you go into public, it doesn't become a problem. You know what yeah. I mean? There's no, there's no reason for that kind of thing. Um, and roll because, reverse when you get your first place. Mm -hmm. Don't you want the people on stage to celebrate you? Like, absolutely. You know. And I've seen too, where, you know, a girl's and not in the first call out and she's up on the stage and her attitude immediately changes yes. in, in a negative way. Yeah. And then they pull her out because they realize that they overlooked her. Yep. So don't ever think it's over till it's yes. over. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Keep your, keep your composure. Stay positive. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then so something else that happened for Olympia too, was the whole situation between Whitney and Missy. So did you, did you see all that stuff too? Yeah. So I, I, 
pardon me because I literally have not been on social a, mm -hmm. a ton, but I think what happened was that Whitney, um, Whitney had the shark yes. like in her routine and then kind of mm -hmm. like threw it. I don't think that would have been an issue if Missy didn't end up Thank getting you. hurt. Correct. Right. I think that that people would have been more funny about it and laughed yes. about yes. it. I don't, I know Whitney personally, you probably do too. Yeah. I don't think mm -hmm. she was trying to be malicious. I don't see that from Whitney. No. I think she was trying to be funny, which Whitney is yes. very funny. She is a joker. Yes, she is. I don't think she was trying to be malicious. Um, Agreed. But again, Agreed. this isn't the outsider looking in and th this is where you, as a pro, would I put something like that in my routine? Probably not because you yeah. never, you just never know the way that the audience is yes. going to react. And even though yep. that wasn't her intention, you're leaving interpretation on the table. Yes. And yes. again, I'm big on respecting all of my athletes and things like that. Not saying that I thought she was coming from a disrespectful place, but I wouldn't put myself in a position for people to interpret it that way. So I don't think it would have been an issue, like I said, if Missy didn't get hurt. Um, yes. And I don't, I also don't think that Whitney was trying to be malicious. But... Hear you. Can't hear you. <laughs> Are we good now? There we go. We got it. We good. <laughs> Is my AirPods dying? <laughs> it's all good. So, um, but yeah, so I, I completely agree with you. Um, I don't think that anything that she did, that, that Whitney did was malicious. Ag agreed. Um, the way I perceived it was, you know, they've, they've pit the two of them against each other all year. They've kind of tried to make it this battle because the two of them have gone back and forth with so many titles. You know what I mean? So they did the Olymp the battle for the Olympia where they both competed against each other at a random show and like we're doing the routines together and things like that. So I think that's where that that came from. Right. And I also relate it back to like fitness being almost like our WWE division right oh okay. so you know what i mean like they they have That's a performance right. aspect absolutely of it, right the thesis so, the correct yes right so the way i look at it too is i'm like you know if it was the wwe you see those guys and those girls go at each other all the time Right. They do stuff like that. That's way worse than kicking a, a shark. You know what I mean? So th that's where I saw it coming from now, where I think it could have been a little bit better executed is maybe if Whitney had talked to Missy and said, hey, listen, just so you know, this is what I'm going to do in my routine so that you don't take any offense to it or whatever. Because I think where everything kind of blew up is like you said, um, you know, Missy got hurt. But then I think that um, that left a wide open space on social media for interpretation before Missy knew what was going on with the routine that Whitney did. Right. Right. So I think that's where the one mistake was where maybe Whitney could have said, Hey, listen, just so you know, Missy, because we've been pit against each other all year, blah, blah, blah. But from Whitney's stand, stand, standpoint, she probably was thinking this is going to be a shock and awe factor. You know what I mean? Like, so I, I understand it from both points. What, um, what I don't, agree with is you know Whitney started getting all these like death threats and things like that and that's ridiculous man it was a it was a performance it was a performance exactly and that's where I have an issue with the interpretation factor yeah and yeah I, I just never think that it should ever get to that point mm -hmm. agree so that brings me to my next point on that with the sportsmanship thing is that you have to be careful about this stuff because online is anonymous meaning you have a lot of people out there who are sitting behind a, a faceless screen on the keyboard that can say whatever they want to and you never know who the who they are right so again going back to your point of the interpretation you can't leave something open for these anonymous people to grab a hold of and run with you know, we're both, we both go on those Reddit boards and things like that. We see this kind of stuff all the time. Reddit is highly anonymous and for the most part. And it just cracks me up how many people have the story wrong in those comments, but they just run with so it. So confident. Yeah. But they just run with no it and they roll it. with it as if this is the truth when it's not even close, but now that's in print and people go on there and they read it and they assume that's what happened. And then right? they start changing yes. their interpretations of things. That's right. There is a reason why I do not do question boxes anymore. Yeah. Because people, people wrong. take anything that you say and twist it a little bit yes. to their narrative. And it's happened to me twice now. And yeah. it's not okay. It's not okay yeah. with people. People want to hear what they want to hear or read what they want to read. It's true. 
but they only do it behind their keyboard warriors. Yep. Not, right. So if somebody read something that I said and found offense to it or wanted clarification, they're not coming to me in my inbox and saying, Hey, you said no. this is this what you meant. They're just saying, this is what she said. And this is that's the way right. I interpreted it. That's true. And it's scary, you know, that's and true. that's where you have to protect yourself. Is it worth it to me to put a question box up and have drama with people in my life because somebody yeah. interpreted and misconstrued my words? Absolutely not. <laughs> Yeah. On the other side of that, though, you have no control over what people decide to interpret, too, because here's a good, good example. This morning I get up and I have a comment on one of my old reels from like months ago. Right. And this guy goes, sounds like a man on my, on my reel. I was like, I was lip syncing to Michael Scott from The Office. It is a man. <laughs> I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? I was like, really? Dumbass. Really? I was, it, Clearly it you don't know me. <laughs> Clearly, you don't know me at all. Oh, Siri! Siri just said that's not nice. I'm like, <laughs> exactly, Siri. Thank you. <laughs> that's so funny. <laughs> that's gonna be anyway. a good entry. One oh five. One oh five. Siri saying that's Siri not nice. That's not nice. <laughs> That's yes, funny. it's not. But, I, but I'm like, I'm laughing. I'm like, I'm literally doing a lip sync to Michael Scott. To a man. He is a man. <laughs> but did that make that person feel good this morning? For whatever reason, I know, did. right? And then, but then they come back and they re the comments are like, "Oh, I should have, I should have realized that everybody knows Michael Scott." No, duh. <laughs> right. <laughs> clearly. Oh, <laughs> clearly, it's a man. Where's the disconnect? <laughs> Oh my god I just never so, do something like that i can't no. i can't relate like no. i can't relate at all no no so yeah. and, and that's why i say i was like at some point like that's why i get to the point i've gotten to the point where i don't care what people think anymore because no matter what i do no matter what i say somebody is going to take it the wrong way yeah and we go back to the intention so again we go back to okay as long as you're doing it with good intention like you said like you're not going out there to try to hurt somebody else. You're not trying to go out there to be a poor sport. You're not trying to go out there and, and say all these things to hurt somebody else um, or to just boost yourself at the expense of everybody else. Then you're doing okay. You know what I mean? Like there's people are going to misinterpret things. You know, there's, there's only so much that you can actually control, right? Going back to the fans, you can't control how the fans are going to respond to something that you do. Right. So it, there's, there, there is the, the limit of, okay, at what point do I stop censoring myself just to, 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 to prevent this stuff from happening too? Yeah. You know what I mean? There is that fine yeah. line. It's hard. You know, with Derek, when he won, yeah. not one person left the auditorium. Mm. Everyone was standing. Everyone was happy. Every the, I was crying. There was so many people yeah. crying. He won the um, the fan award, the People's Choice Award. Yep. So now we're looking at two completely different situations yep. within a twenty four hour period, right? Yep. Oh, moments, moments, yes. and how fans here reacted one way, yep. and how these fans are reacting another way to the same situation and the same person right yep but that it has to do with what we're saying the culture and things like that goes back yes. to what we already said but yeah i mean i just you know at the end of the day everybody knows derek and his heart and good sportsmanship and that is the definition of of, of good sports that's right and that's and that's uh, that brings it right down to it it's like as long as you are doing it with the best of intentions i think that's where the line is drawn you know what i mean so Check yourself because, you know, it's, it's, it's hard. We get two emotional spaces. Like I said yesterday, I almost cried while doing cardio. You know what I mean? And it's just like, you get to that point, you got to know what your limits are. Right. I had a few girls that messaged me about, you know, their suits and stuff yesterday. And it wasn't anything out of the ordinary, but I just found myself being annoyed for no reason. You know, and I was like, this is not, it's because of my mental state of where I was. It wasn't their fault. It was my fault. So I had to take a step back and be like, okay, respond to these, these girls with kindness. You know, I hope I didn't come off annoyed. <laughs> I tried, I tried my best, you know, cause I get that way too. And I, yeah. you know, that, that close to show and I'm like, why is yeah. this annoying me right now? Yeah. It's, it's not, press. it's not their fault. Not them, it's me. Yes. And I need to respond. Not the way I'm feeling. Yes. Kindly. Yes. It's that's Absolutely. important too. to remember that when you're so close to stage two, that, uh, David uh, Dempsey says this all the time. Be careful when you're close to stage how you're responding. Yes, to it's normal for you to feel that way, but you can control control your response, not in the emotional way. Yep, 
And I'm, I'm, I'm aware of those things. Like I'm aware, yes. but sometimes it's hard. Like I just want to go and like bite, you know, when there's, there's no reason for me to do that other than right. how I'm feeling right here. Right. Yeah. yeah. So you do have to be careful. Um, and like we talked about, sometimes that means, you know, kind of closing yourself down a little bit, you know, um, I, I don't go into my help desk and stuff like that right now. Dan, Dan does all that for me, response everybody for me, um, because I will be short with people yes. and take it's just not, a, yeah, it's just not a good look. It's just not, it's not the right thing for me to be doing. Um, and I, I know that about myself. So I know it's better that I just take a step back and let them do it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and you got to know those things about yourself too. It's okay to have those moments, you know, I mean, this happens a lot of times with women when they get into their hormonal cycles and things like that too. And I know I'm coming up on that as well. Like we've talked about before. <laughs> so I'm like, it's compounded right now with everything that's going on. So it's like, I, I got to just take a moment and take a breath, you know, um, yeah. and try to not even, and sometimes just my, my actual tone and things like that too. It's not even just being short, but it's just, you can hear that I'm, I'm pissy. You know what I mean? And it's not, it's not good. You know, not I gotta, you say. it's how you it's say how it. You say it. Mm -hmm. That's how people interpret it. And mm -hmm. that's how we get into these situations. That's right. Absolutely. 100%. So, you know, all good points. Yeah. Just understanding and remembering that also when you do stuff like that, where you do spout off, um, it creates that domino effect and it will stick with you. So, you know, try your very best to be able to take a moment and breathe and not respond, respond and react with that raw emotion, you know? So leave a lot of good vibes, good yeah. energy, and then none of this should be an issue. If that's, that's right. Like that's right. And if you do go off for whatever reason, it's okay to apologize. Yes, it is. <laughs> I've had to do it many times in my career where I had a moment like you're describing and I got yeah. off the call and I was like, yeah. About that. Cringe. I got to call back and apologize. Yeah. Just say, Hey, I'm having a day. I apologize yeah. on my phone and both. And they go, I really appreciate that. Yep. An apology is okay. We're human. It's, yep. all, it's all right. Own it. You yep. know? Absolutely. Absolutely. So, and uh, any other closing thoughts that you'd like to put out there as far as the sportsmanship thing is concerned that we didn't touch on? No, just know that if we're ever backstage together, I'm going to help you. I hope that you yeah. help me and, I think that this sport is going to only continue to grow when there's con conclusiveness or inclusiveness, inclusiveness. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nobody wants to feel like they're being pushed out or that they're not yeah. liked. And then that's only going to turn people away from the sport, especially yeah. women. We're all very sensitive where yes. we all care. We all, you know, things like that. So I want this sport to grow. I love this sport so much. And I want, especially amateur athletes to have such a great experience because that first show experience is going to be the make or break, whether they continue or not. And if they continue that's or right. not, that's the growth of our sport. So if we love this sport and we want it to continue, especially here in the States, we need to create a culture that athletes want to show up in. And I think right. that we can all step up and be better at that. This is not a mean girl competition. This is not mm -hmm. high school. Whoa. But, whoa. That's some, I said something that they really liked. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh my God, how did you do that? I'm a number. <laughs> right? That's what I think. I think that <laughs> you're like, up. and on that note. <laughs> and on that note, I am a firework. Like, right? I want to know what made that happen. You know, I've noticed this happened a couple times. You must have some sort of setting on your computer or something because when you got back on after your, your headphones died, you gave the thumbs up and a little thumb up came, bubble came up on the side. Uh, see, <laughs> I told you. I told you. Do it again. <laughs> Sorry. Easily, easily entertained here. Do you? Are you? What kind of computer are you on? I just. It's a MacBook. I just updated oh. it a couple weeks ago to the new software. It must be recognizing. I don't know. Yeah, because I noticed that it was a, it was a couple of podcasts ago where it did that, and I was like, "Where did that come from?" And like, I because that was one of the ones where Drew was like off the side of you or something when you were talking to him. I don't know what happened, but but the thumbs up came up, and I was like, "So it's my thought, computer." Yeah, it's your computer. I wonder what, computer. Did the, what did the fireworks? I know, right? Keep I moving know. around now. <laughs> I know, right? I don't know. What, 
I don't know what you were talking about either. I'll have to go back once we once we put the we're podcast gonna have some out. good reels. That's or for sure, neural, right? <laughs> Okay. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I don't feel so special anymore. I'm like, where are my fireworks? What the hell? Yeah, your big desktop doesn't do the fireworks. No, my desktop doesn't do fireworks. I need, I, need to do, I need a new laptop. I need a new desktop. Oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. Well, on that note, uh, episode 12. Yeah, sports. We did it. Right here. We got it. We got it. We got it in. Everybody so, go with Sean. A good luck yeah. for the next couple of weeks. We love yes. you. I'm We're like so a, excited for I'm you. I'm gonna try and update as best I can. Like I said, if I can, if I can figure out how to do a podcast while like I'm in Japan or something like that, then we'll figure it out. But yeah. um, I, my travel day is Monday or is it Sunday? Yeah, travel day is Sunday, and then I get to Japan on Monday, so I lose like a whole day in travel. Okay. Um, but we'll figure that out next week. If I can, if I can, yeah, if I can get my, my laptop and stuff to work with that, we'll do that. Um, uh, and then of course the time difference, which I think actually think is 13 hours. It's the time difference. So, okay. (laughs) Fun times. All right. Good times. So if we miss one or whatever, it would only be one week. (laughs) Yeah. It'll be a week. Regardless, I'll keep everybody, regardless, I will keep everybody updated on like, you know, Insta stories and things like that. Cause that I know I can do, do. you know? So and if um, anyone has questions or can't figure out where she's at or where she's doing, just message me. I'll keep There you go. There you go. Perfect. It'll be fun time though. I'm excited. It's a whole, it's a whole two weeks by myself. So it'd be interesting. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. That's fun. Um, and that's it. That's it. So subscribe guys. If you haven't done so already, thank you for all the support already. We appreciate it. And we'll see you back here next time. That's good.